So it is my really great pleasure to introduce Sharon Shattuck to you. But before I do that, I just wanted to tell you about a few things that are going on here. If I still have that piece of paper. Um, general information. You know as, an al as alumni, and it's so, so wonderful to see all of you, that you are welcome to come to any of our master classes, and we have a few great ones coming up. I know that some of you are in, working in documentaries, some of you are working in other places, but we have great people for you to meet. And um, so let me tell you about it. Um, coming up on November 12th, we have the uh, filmmaker Matthew Heineman and his editor, Matthew Hamachek from Cartel Land, coming to do a master class on structure and editing your documentary. Does that ring a bell? Structure, structure, structure. And um, that should be really, really terrific. It is a little early, it's at 4.30. So I don't know if you can make it. But we also have a um, master class on uh, community engagement and distribution with Michelle Stevenson, who did American Promise. And that's on dis uh, Wednesday, December 9th, from 6 to 9. So I think if you'd, uh, you're interested in that, please, please come. These are great people, even if you're not. They're great people to experience. And the week before on December 2nd is Judith Helfand about branding yourself. And uh, that should be really exciting. So um, that's what's happening here. And for the first time, if you saw the flyer, Doc NYC uh, has given um, NYU Journalism News Doc a slot, and three films will be highlighted. <laughs> There, yay! And our slot is Friday from 12.30 to 2. And then Sharon's film will have its premiere on Saturday at 9 p.m. And I am working on getting discounts for all of us for her film and for ours. Hmm? And there are discounts for 10 or more tickets if you want to see, which I'm sure you will after you see the little bit that we're going to show you today. Okay. Um, so, and Kirsten Johnson um, had her film above on, um, okay, Kelsey, help me. What, what is the new? Um, the, I know it's called The Above. Say it again. Field of Vision, Field of Vision yeah. which is Laura Poitras' uh, uh, website, and it's really beautiful. So I uh, encourage all of you who know Kirsten or don't know Kirsten to take a look. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to mention that we have an international um, extension of our program with Jason Maloney. I was hoping he would be here today. And uh, some of the students here um, have traveled with him to Morocco and the next, uh, and did several wonderful pieces. And then the trip for next spring is to the Ukraine. So we'll send you all this information. I hope you visit us at nyunewsdoc.com to see what's going on. Um, Kelsey makes a huge effort to keep it um, current so that you know what people are doing, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, oh, and one more advertisement. So um, many of the docs that were produced here in the last few years uh, are in a special series called Inside Lens that's on Channel 25, NYC Life. We will send out notices when it's on in March again, 
but many of your pieces are being featured, and I hope you take a look and support your fellow alumni. Okay, Sharon, we're back to you. So I'm very excited to have Sharon with us today because um, this was a little bit of a surprise for me. I know her as a science reporter, producer. She took on After Effects almost more than, well, Faith is quite behind her, but um, did, it just was like, set, animation was second nature to her. And she did a wonderful film when she was here called um, Parasites. And it was quite beautiful. So then when she started working on a film about her father, I went, hmm, that's interesting, having done a film about my father. But hers was quite different. So I'm going to let Sharon talk a little bit before we see a clip from her film about the experience going from NYU and why she came to NYU and how it ended up in this film. Hi, thanks for having me, everybody. Um, hi. <laughs> um, thanks for having me, Marsha. So I, yeah, like, before NYU, I was working in science um, at the Field Museum doing botany, and I was very lonely, and I was thinking about, <laughs> you know, um, about being able to communicate science and getting people excited rather than being in this herbarium by myself um, every single day, and that's why I applied to NYU, and I'm so glad you took me in because um, when I got here, I started to learn how to tell stories and to to kind of figure out what's important for a story structure. And I think that's really what I took away more than anything. Um, because technology changes, but that story and like knowing how to tell that is something that's always going to be there. And um, when I was here, I started working with Michelle De La Tour, hi, <laughs> on a couple projects. And one of the first projects was going up to the, what was it, the, the rain, the LGBT center in the Bronx. Um, and filming with a transgender person. And I didn't tell Michelle until later that the reason that I wanted to do that is because my dad is transgender. And I didn't tell anybody in NYU. So the entire time I was here, that was under wraps. And it wasn't until um, a few years later, I I'd always kind of knew I wanted to make this film. Um, and I didn't know if I could make the movie. I didn't know if my parents would let me. And um, it wasn't until a few years later that this, the cat kind of got out of the bag when I made a short for the New York Times about my dad's name change. And then from there, I knew that I was going to make a movie. Um, so yeah, that's how it started. So do you want to tell us a little bit about how it moved from there to production? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So um, at first, I was. When like I made a Kickstarter campaign, you know that's like I'd never made a feature film before. I'd been working for my friend Ian Cheney, who did King Corn, and he's done The Search for General So, a few other films, and I was his animator. And I, you know, I was like, well, nobody like nobody's just going to give me money to make this movie because I've never made a movie. And uh, so I I did a Kickstarter, and I said that oh, I'm going to make a movie about other people's LGBT families. Um, maybe I'll disclose about mine just so that I'm like legitimate, you know, but I'm not gonna like make a movie about my my family and um, So that's how I started and I started filming I, I got the money from the Kickstarter and I started filming other people's families and while I was doing that I also filmed um, my own parents going mushroom hunting because I thought maybe you know, maybe they could be like eight minutes of the movie. And um, when I brought that footage back to New York and was looking at it, I realized that they're the most compelling part of anything that I'd shot so far. Uh, so that's actually in the first clip. Um, so you'll see the first footage that I shot before I knew I was making a movie. Okay, so we're gonna watch um, a clip of this, uh, a, a couple of clips actually, and then we'll talk more about um, the production and the post-production. That gave you a nice taste of the film. Um, so, Sharon, you've been on quite a ride with this film, right? It's been um, uh, at major film festivals, and you had a great experience at Good Pitch, where they said you made them all cry. Can you tell us about that? Um, yeah, well, have you guys heard of Good Pitch before? 
Okay, so some people have. Um, it's, so it's a group, there, it's uh, through this group called BritDoc, which is you know, based in the UK, um, and they fund a lot of, uh, they, they do these things called good pitches, and they're around the world now, and um, they pick six films per day, and it's like a day-long event where they'll have three in the morning, three in the afternoon, and the filmmaking team goes up in front of a room that's been curated by the, the Brit Doc people, um, potential major donors, um, people from POV, from ITVS, like people who can really get your film out there and seen and funded and finished. And um, you go up there and you play your clip and you talk about your movie and then you have a, a, a table full of people who can talk about the good that your movie could do in the world. So it's really based on outreach and about like impact and trying to get your movie out in the biggest way possible. And I don't know what happened with ours. Like <laughs> I was, we were the only, I think we were the only like personal project where one of the filmmakers was making a movie, you know, that I was making a film about my, my family. And um, I, something about it, I just like choked up, but it was like just in the right place. <laughs> like when I was talking to this room and then after we finished our pitch, we just got a ton of like, uh, it was, they called it a waterfall of love. It was just all these people from the audience standing up and going to the audience microphones and being like, I'll donate, you know, this much money. And <laughs> it was just like incredible. And they, you know, that it was, it was really um, amazing. And I was so terrified, like, to, to be up there. And I didn't want to break down at all. And I, I just did this sort of choked up thing and then paused for a minute and was like, <sighs> you know, but it was just enough. <laughs> So, so without the pause, any advice about how to do a good pitch? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, I think like, um, I, I think documentary filmmakers, it, you know, I don't think by nature we want to be out there in front talking about our projects up on stage, um, but I think that there's nobody better to talk about our projects because we care about them so much and I think that that really comes through. Um, I think you just have to like, it's almost better if you don't memorize the whole script. Like some of my friends, um, one of my friends is an amazing guy who can just like memorize everything and he just gives the whole pitch and it's just perfect. But it's almost better if you kind of like pause and you know take it all in and maybe say a few things and then stop and um, that's what I would do. But that's just me. Now you had a pretty good support team. Can you tell us about how you pulled that together? Yeah, so my, um, with our film, I, so I, I'd been working on it for a really long time alone and kind of on and off with um, several friends from NYU actually, uh, but nobody who like had produced a movie before and, and really when I say produced, it's like fundraising, like knowing those people and those connections. Um, and I had been, um, I've, I've known my friend Martha Shane for a really long time uh, through another friend through, originally through my Radiolab internship when I was in grad school here. Um, and she kept asking me, like, how, how's your movie going? And she's interested in this stuff because she directed a movie called After Tiller that just won an Emmy this year, um, but it was, it was at Sundance in 2013. And so she kept checking in and, and I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like, I'm not really moving very fast. Um, I don't know what to do. You know, I've never done this before. I don't know anybody. And finally she was like, you know what? I'm, my movie's kind of wrapping up. Do you want me to produce your movie? <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. Like, it was the nicest offer that I've ever had. Um, and, and it, you know, and it still, like, it was a team effort and we, we wrote the grants together. We did everything, you know, back and forth. Um, but having her experience was just so incredibly helpful. Can so. you give us a few examples of when you really appreciated it? Well, a, a lot of it was like, because she's directed a film, um, a really good film, I think knowing, like there were a lot of places where I felt uncomfortable about having something about my family in the project, you know, in the movie. And she was the one who was like, you know, I think this is really important and I think you need to keep this in. And if I really pushed back, she'd be like, okay, let's take it out. But then I would watch it. You know, we, we had to watch every single thing. So you take out a little chunk and you watch the entire 76 minute cut again. And then I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we need to put that back in. Um, so it was really like trusting that she knows what she's doing. Um, and so she was really helpful in that way. And then also um, our editor, Freddie Shanahan, I've worked with him a lot. Um, 
me as an animator and, and him as an editor with our friend Ian Cheney. So Freddie's done a ton of work and um, we've worked together for so long that I really trusted his, his taste also. We're gonna get, we'll come back to editing, but you mentioned proposal writing. So what did you learn about proposal writing that you might be able to share with everyone here? I haven't thought about, I'm sorry, I haven't thought about an answer to that. Um, proposal writing, I mean, I, I think. The key thing in the first page? Yeah, like I, I definitely think it's important to kind of really, uh, obviously don't give it all away, like kind of give enough away that you're like, you leave somebody intrigued. It's just like teasing anything. So, you know, give enough away that they know that you know what you're doing and they, that you know they know that you know how to tell a story, but don't give away everything. Um, leave them wanting more and wanting to know what happens. So it's not the inverted triangle. <laughs> right, like with the thesis at the end, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, or if, the, if it is, it's a very short triangle and then there's a lot more under it. <laughs> yeah. And so let's get back to editing. You edited your own piece here. What was it like to work with an editor? Yeah, that was different, definitely. I mean, it was it was helpful with this particular movie just because it's it was so close to me. Um, and there were a couple scenes, like the actually the one scene I edited was the nosy neighbors scene, which we we didn't play tonight. But if you see the movie, you'll see it. It's just like um, all of our neighbors in town gossiping about us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wanted it to be really funny, and so I just I like jumped in and did that scene. Um, but you did the interviews. I did, yeah, I did all the interviews. Um, I shot everything and um, I cut that scene and then Freddie basically didn't touch it, which made me feel good because he, he's a pro. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was really helpful to work with another person and to, like, to, to kind of go back and forth on, on all the little decisions that go into making an edit. It was really, also Freddie's so good at what he does and it's really nice to work with an editor who's really good. You know, because you're like, oh, I'm learning, even though I'm not editing this myself. And you went to, uh, your, the film was chosen for Sundance Documentary Film Program grant. What was that like? That was, um, I felt like it was really out of my hands, but I mean, I think um, that was incredible. Like, when what, we... What did you do with them? What I mean, did? well, we, we, we um, made a, I think it was a 20 minute, at the time, I think that the requirements have changed now, but it was like a 20 minute cut that we submitted to Sundance, and, um, and then we just waited. And I think, I think they did come back to, or no, we went to them and we were like, oh, we have an updated cut, can we send it to you, you know? Um, and they said sure, and so then we sent them another cut, and um, and then we heard in the summer, and it was just awesome, like a complete surprise. So, yeah. But what did you do? Uh, oh, you just got the gr the grant. There was no, you. Okay, great, great. Yeah, yeah. They have like um, Sundance. What is it? It's like the Documentary Film Fund um, is very different than the film festival. So that's something to keep in mind. Because we were like, we're in, we're going to be in Sundance, and it's definitely not the same. <laughs> it's not the same people, it's not the programmers. <laughs> like, it's a whole other set of hurdles. But we did, we premiered at Full Frame um, in Durham, North Carolina, and that was really incredible. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was April 10th, and um, Trisha, my dad, was there, and my sister was there. My mom was working. She still works full time, so she couldn't come. Martha was there, Freddie was there. And... Um, I mean, we got a crazy standing ovation. Like, the, the people working there said that they hadn't ever seen one that long before, <laughs> which was really cool. And, um, and then I was worried. I didn't know how Trisha was going to react, you know, to having this, like, to having our lives basically just, like, put out there for everybody. This and, was the um, first time. This is the first time, yeah. Um, and then, I mean, when the credits were rolling, she sort of started, like, moonwalking onto the stage, and, like, the audience just freaked out. Like, they were so excited. They were so happy to see Trisha in person, and, and I just knew then that it was going to be okay. And, like, I, you know, um, and, you know, it still feels weird to make a movie that's, that's like, oh, this is my family, this is me, you know, on camera. It's not my instinct, necessarily. Um, but, you know, even at that first screening, we had people come up and say, thank you for making this. Um, we've had people say this, you know, if, if my wife had seen this, we might still be together. That's what a trans person told me. 
um, and people take all sorts of things away from it, you know, not just people with LGBT families. So it's been rewarding in that way. So you were riding um, a, a tide of, of uh, transgender people coming out. So tell us about that. I think Caitlyn Jenner came out the day before our premiere. <laughs> so we tweeted at her and said, thank you. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. We didn't, you know, we didn't mean for that to happen, obviously. I've been working on the movie since 2011. Um, but it's weird how it's, I feel like, I, I appreciate, like, when we were making the movie, we decided not to do a big section that's like, what does it mean to be trans? And I'm so glad that we made that choice, because now I feel like the media, it's like, you're kind of, people are understanding it more, and it would have been too boring or regressive to have that in the movie. So I'm really glad that we didn't do that. Well, what was the hardest question to ask and what you thought you got the best answer? I mean, the hardest question was, do my parents, uh, are, are my parents still intimate? <laughs> I, I asked my dad that <laughs> question. Um, it was mortifying. I didn't want to. Um, but my, one of our advisors at IFP Labs, which was another program that we were in last year, he was like, you have to ask. You have to ask because so many people want to know and you need to be credible as a as the documentary filmmaker, so I asked. Um, and it's in the movie, so. So you have to come, come see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, did, so did you shoot a lot of it yourself? Mm -hmm. So um, do you think uh, being able to shoot yourself made a difference? Yes. Oh yeah, because it's, it's such a personal, um, like being a, you know, being a documentary filmmaker, um, I feel like you want to have as small of a crew as possible because you don't want, I don't know, my parents are shy and they, they didn't want to be on camera. They weren't like, it's not like talking to some media savvy person. And so I, I wanted as few people in the room as possible. And so for me, it was really important to be able to shoot myself. Yeah, I learned that here too. And, <laughs> and um, uh, did you make a different kind of connection with uh, Trisha than you had before through that? Yeah, I, uh, a large part of the film is also about Trisha's artwork. Um, and, I, you know, she's always been a painter, and I, I knew that there was something under the surface there. Um, I didn't realize until I started asking about it that the paintings are pretty much literally a visual diary, and they have all these little, like, pieces of our lives, like all of our lives are, are in these paintings, and they're self-portraits that I didn't know about. Um, it really all ties together in a cool way, and so that's a big thread in the film that we didn't have a chance to show here. But yeah. And um, you had a protester. Yes. We had our first protester this summer at uh, Michael Moore's film festival, the Traverse City Film Festival. We had one guy out front with a sign with like so much lettering that you couldn't even really tell what it was. <laughs> <laughs> what it said. I think he was protesting everything at the festival. Um, yeah, but he was just under the marquee, and I, I wanted to get a picture of him, actually, but I just didn't make it outside in time. So. And um, if you had advice for students on two things. First, um, uh, engagement and community outreach, what w would that be? I think not every filmmaker is an activist, and I think that that's okay. Um, I think for a long time it was like you had to be a filmmaker and your own activist. Like, luckily there are companies like Film Sprout now that do that activism for you. That's who we're working with. Um, so I think that that's great, you know, and, and like I want the movie to go as far as possible and I want people to use it for their groups, you know, the Family Equality Council is a big um, uh, partner of ours too. So, but yeah, I'm just, I'm not personally an activist, but I'm, I'm like so happy to talk about the film. So whenever there's a chance, I'll go and talk about it. And finally, what's your takeaway about networking? Yeah, <laughs> it's really important. I mean, I, I met Martha because I was an intern at Radiolab and a friend of mine started working at Radiolab and Eventually, I met Martha. Um, I, I think all of this, the first funding I got for this movie was Fork Films, um, Abby Disney's company. 
she, they're one of our executive producers, and um, I got that because I'm friends with Caitlin Boyle from Film Sprout, who is the wife of Kurt Ellis, who works with Ian Cheney, and Ian is the guy that I've been working with forever. <laughs> so that's like how this movie got, you know, got off its feet um, post Kickstarter. It's like it's all because of those people that I've met. And I was telling, I was telling Faith earlier. Um, I think one of my biggest like pieces of advice is just don't be a jerk to anybody <laughs> if you can help it, because you never know. You know, like somebody could be your savior in the future, um, or you could be the same for them, so. And to go to all the events and introduce yourself. <laughs> yes. So we have time for a couple of questions. If people want to ask Sharon questions. I mean, I, I, well, one of the things I, I learned, like when you're a kid, you know, you kind of, you don't think of, you kind of think of everything in terms of you and you're like, why did you do that to me? You know, why did you make that decision? That really impacted me in a horrible way. Um, and going back and talking, I, I learned a lot about like why they made the decisions that they made. And um, one of the big ones for, for me was like, why didn't you get a divorce? Because it would have been convenient for me as a fifth grader. Um, and just to go back and really understand where they were coming from, I think that was really, like, fascinating. Because as an adult, it's a lot easier to do that. Thank you. Um, you, you started touching on it, but I just feel like one of the things that I keep hearing as an increased pressure on filmmakers is you have to have an impact campaign. It's mm -hmm. as much a part of the film, you know, as whatever these days. And having been at Good Pitch, I guess you've seen kind of that for your film and other films. I'm wondering, um, outside of using somewhere like Film Sprout, does it, I mean, does it create double the work or is it possible to have a film go places without an impact campaign or has it really changed the way that you see potentially programming your film based on the impact campaign and like like you said HBO saying it's too family friendly like what like what kind of things you know I mean yeah like well we we knew that we might want to do an impact campaign um we didn't really seriously consider it until Good Pitch came to us and they said, we, like we applied for um, a previous Good Pitch and didn't get it and then we got an email from them and they said, hey, do you wanna do Chicago Good Pitch? And we were like, oh, okay. Um, so then we had to like quickly whip up an impact campaign and figure out what, what that would entail. And so we, uh, we basically like, I threw it together and, and it's all things that I cared about, you know, like I wanted to, to communicate with LGBT families and kind of get these issues out into this wider audience. Um, so it wasn't like a false, you know, desire. Um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of like, we just had to do it because that's what you do. And so it did feel, it does feel a bit like that. Um, but I have to say that Michelle Stevenson on December 9th is going to do the ABCs of like a, a low key mm -hmm. outreach campaign and a high one. So like what you can do yourself and what you can't and how to conceptualize it from the beginning. So I please come to that. It, it's really as much for the current students as for all of you. And we did, we did kind of tier it. Like we had, um, even though in our, in our official proposal, it's like really big and like, you know, this is if, this is if, the, if we had the Mercedes, you know, of funding and everything. Um, you know, between us, we were like, okay, if we don't get this much, we can still do this. If we don't get this much, we can still do this. So it's sort of like an ABC, yeah. Mike, did you? So uh, can you tell us what should a news and doc student who's just finished his or her film do first, or is there something they should be doing now? <laughs> Not related to the <laughs> editing of the film. Um, I mean, I, I guess for, for me, I could just say what I did. I mean, I, I just started working with more experienced filmmakers. Um, but do you mean to get your own movie yeah, your out? Own film. In the progress of your own films. Um, I mean, I think 
going to as many workshops as you can while you're still pre-production to really like learn how to shoot and like um, follow, like if you're doing verite, follow the action. Uh, those are the things, like f at least for my film, my, my Parasites movie that I made when I was here, there were a lot of things that I wish that I could have done differently. And I think that part of it, like you're not gonna be able to escape that, um, you know, cause it is a learning process. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> But definitely like trying to do as much as you can up front to make sure that you know what you're doing when you're shooting, as, like as comfortable with the camera as you can be. Um, that would be really important. Um, but I would say the Michelle Stevenson workshop will <laughs> help you focus. Because <laughs> everyone should be getting their pieces out there. The, biggest problem I see is that when you finish your film, you're so ex exhausted and happy and anxious to get a job that you don't um, promote your film and get it out there and find ways to network it. Even if it's um, not on television, that doesn't matter anymore with these impact campaigns. They're more concerned with communities using them and identifying the communities that could use them than a big mass broadcast. Any other questions? Hi, Sharon. This is Richa. I wanted to ask you about personal documentary myself, and I was wondering how difficult was it for you to detach yourself from the whole process of filmmaking, because you were obviously involved with your family and had personal stakes in the story. So how did you sort of balance that as a documentary filmmaker? It was interesting. I mean, I, I went back and forth on a day-to-day -day basis, like even hour-to-hour -hour basis um, between being a filmmaker and being a family member. Um, so I don't think I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I detached or anything. It was, it was like when I was, when I had the camera, I was the filmmaker and I would ask questions that I would never ask without a camera, like, are you still intimate? <laughs> um, yeah, and then as soon as the camera was off, I was back to just being there in the present. And that was for production. And then post-production, it was a lot easier to go into filmmaker mode because I'm just sitting there with my editor and sometimes with Martha um, talking about the story, you know. But um, but yeah, I did. I mean, there's, there's definitely a balance and you kind of have to, like, I fought with myself over what, what I should include and I fought with them over what I should include. So it was really like a... Um, a lot of talking. <laughs> Did you change the date of your wedding to create a nice story arc? <laughs> yeah, that was a coincidence. Um, no, I, I, it was funny, like, you know, because the, the film is about my parents' marriage, um, but in the middle of filming, I got engaged. And so it really became a question of, like, what will my dad wear to my wedding? And kind of, uh, you know, the, the wedding takes over the second half of the movie. And um, it was really... I, I don't know, like part of me knew when I got engaged, I was like, yes, this is be great. <laughs> this is great for the movie. <laughs> so I, I did a lot of thinking beforehand because I, I knew he was thinking about rings and I was like, is this really like, am I 100% on board? Like regardless of the movie, <laughs> you know, just make sure that I am. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you, Sharon, so much for being here. And Sherry's gonna be around for the next hour to chat with everybody if you have more questions. So thank you, everyone, and I hope we'll see you at Doc NYC, either at her screening or ours. Oh, and let thank me introduce you. the people who will be at our screening. Richa? Uh, <laughs> Contessa? <laughs> and Rong Fei. Where are you? Yay! Okay, so come support us on the Friday uh, the 13th. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> at 1230.